have you know. And I raise a hallelujah with the presence of my enemies. And I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on, let's lift up our voices. And I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. And I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
Thank you, creative team. You guys are awesome. Aren't they awesome, guys? I tell you what, they work so hard. They work so hard. And I, you know, I don't always give them praise because I know that my son is the worship pastor. And sometimes I, I probably should do it more often. But because of that, you know, I, but no, it's not because he's my son. It's because he's, the, his team from the back to the front is anointed. And, man, they work through all kinds of technical difficulties every Sunday they come in. And this morning... It wasn't fun for them, but man, you know what? They persevered, God anointed them, and they brought us into the presence of the living God today. And I'm so thankful, and I'm glad that you're here today. Good morning, church. So glad to see each and every one of you. Aren't you glad that you came to church today already? Amen, amen. Well, real quick, uh, before we get to the Word, just want to, I know it's in the announcements, but I want to make sure that I cover it because it's exciting that um, coming up in two weeks is our annual business meeting. I like to call it our praise service. It's going to be on a Wednesday night at 6.30. We announced it here. Uh, you can check it out on Facebook. But please, if you are a, thank you guys for that. Boy, you guys are Johnny on the spot. Wow, I love it when everything comes together. But please mark your calendars. Um, if you're not a voting member but you call Bear Creek home, please come. It, I, it's, it, I don't want to say it's a formality because it really isn't. We're going to look at what God did financially through our church this past year, and you're going to be amazed at some of the things that we were financially doing in spite of this thing that's going around, which we won't even spell it. Um, but it's amazing what God has done in our fellowship and has continued. To, this year, church, is going to be different and in, in, in so in, unlike any of the other years in the past 12 years I've been here, I promise you. I really feel, and I'm going to be sharing some things uh, next week and the week following while I feel God's. But, man, just be here for that as we celebrate that amen a lot of things going on in your church um this morning we've got a fireball evangelist that's going to be with us this morning uh i am not preaching today which is okay i hope you're all right with it but the board was so gracious to send sherry and i we had a a minister's retreat of lagrange georgia with the west florida network and so we left thursday morning went up there got back last night about 3 3 30 4 o'clock um, and I was i had a message and i was going to preach this morning but lord just said you know what and i'm just being honest with you I'm sending you up there for a retreat to be fed and to spend time with your wife. And I just didn't feel like I needed to be studying and preparing for a message. And so I asked Pastor Ben last week, I said, you know, would you please come up? You're not the B team, you're the A team, and, and just minister to us. And, of course, he jumped at the opportunity in spite of all that's going on uh, in his life right now. And I want you to help make welcome the man of God today that God sent to minister to us today. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Ben, come on up. Get up here. Watch this. Do I need to help you, sir? <laughs> Would you, will you do something as he comes, though? I'm, we're going to, uh, he, I don't care if he cares or don't care. Uh, Pastor Ben and Miss Helen are really going through a lot of things health-wise. Tomorrow morning, she, it's actually needed. It's not a bad thing, but she's going through knee surgery tomorrow. And uh, I think she, he probably needs more prayer than she does. I don't know. Maybe she does because you're going to be her caregiver for a couple. Well, you've been her caregiver. You know what I mean. Uh, but she goes in in the morning to have some uh, work done on her knee from her fall from about six weeks, almost two months now. And so the doctor finally said she needs it. And she's got some other issues going on in her body that, that they need some good reports from. Will you join me? I'm praying for Pastor Ben this morning, Miss Helen. Father, I thank you so much for the gifts that you give us. God, this family, this husband and this wife, Father, they're gifts that you've given to me and my wife personally. God, they're also gifts to this church, and I thank you for them, God. And I just pray blessings over Brother Ben right now, Father, first in his mind as he prepares to preach, Lord. God, give him clarity, anointing, Father, like never before, Lord, to speak into our lives and to challenge us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, touch his body. Give him the strength he needs, Lord. Give him the breath. Every breath he breathes is from you, God. And, Lord, we pray for Miss Helen, Lord, that you touch her. God, as she prepares for the surgery in the morning, Lord, we know, God, it's going to go well. We trust you with it. But, Lord, what we want to see is a quick recovery. And, Lord, with this unknown that's going on in her body, God, these tests they've been running, Father, you know very well what's going on. And, Lord, we don't have to know. We don't have to know what it is for you to heal her. We don't have to understand it for you to heal her. 
God, we're believing, Lord, that whatever that is just dissipates and it goes away. God, and you strengthen her body. I thank you for that. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. Brother, take your liberty. Just don't talk bad about it. Is that my bottle of water? That is yours. I have not Because I'm drinking half to you if it ain't. If you got your Bibles this morning, if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, turn with me to Luke, I mean Mark, I'm sorry, chapter 5, 21 through 43. We might not read all of those, but that's where I got my text from this morning. Now, Pastor Tony laughs about me being old. I never used that word. He's coming. <laughs> It'll happen to all of us. If you see me jump off this platform you'll know the anointing has definitely hit again. I will walk up and down the stairs. But I'm the one that was sitting in old folks' home, and a celebrity came to the old folks' home that used to know all the people in there. Talked to five or six people, and they all knew who he was. And there's one old guy sitting over in the corner, and he thought, well, I'll go find out what his problem is. He looked at the old man, and he said, "Uh, do you know who I am? He said, no, but if you go up front, they can tell you. That's me. One of these days, I'll probably be there. But how many of us today are facing things we feel like we've never faced before? How many of us feel like that somebody messes with us all the time? I got his name for you. It's a five-letter word, Satan. He loves to mess with you. He loves to ruin your day. He loves to make it rain when you need sunshine. He would tear you down if he could. But I got good news today. I know a man who does miracles. I know a man who changes seasons. I know a man who moves when it comes time to move. I have been in the last, I don't know, five or six years, (laughs) but the last four or five months, it's gotten a lot worse for me and Helen. You know why? Every morning I black that other one's eye. And I speak to the one that chases him up the hill away from me. Listen this morning, if you will. Know today that God is on the throne. He, when he says he'll never leave you and never forsake you, that's even sitting in the hospital when you can't have nobody with you but yourself. I never understood that. We got six folks, sick folks, and they can't see their loved ones. I'll never understand that, but the older I get the more I give in to the rules that people put on me. I guess I'm missing the whole, there it is. But say with me this morning, if you would, it's not over until God says it's over. Say that. And think about what you just said. We sang about what God, I don't know how in the world the praise team knew what I was going to speak on this morning. But every song just about that we sang is going to go in line with the message today. See, we as Christians have a unique opportunity to spread the gospel. We are the ones in the world today that have the opportunity to do what we told God we would do when we got saved. You know what that is? Spread the gospel. Now, I'm going to tell you how I feel this morning. If I'm going out on a limb, Pastor Tony will saw it out under me probably. But anyway, Facebook ain't your answer. How many amen be? Raise your hand if you amen. How many of you really believe that? How many believe today that the internet's not your buddy all the time? How many know today that TV's not your friend? How many know that sometimes the radio will blow your ears off? They couldn't get mine, they're too big, but yours they might could blow off. Just think about the unique opportunities we have and how we throw those opportunities away as we go through life. How many of you went through something this week that you heard on the radio that bothered you? It's okay to be honest. How many saw something on TV that you knew you shouldn't have watched? And if you don't raise your hand, you're lying. There is stuff in this world today that we could use to the good of spreading the gospel. We watch the other stuff. Why ain't we watching what God's doing? Now, Pastor Tony has been doing something to me the last few months, two months, three months. He's been tearing right into my skin with his messages. 
If he's not touching you, something's wrong. You know what I wonder about the church sometimes? Where are those seat belts that you can't get off when you sit down? I have never seen one. But I'll tell you what, the Spirit can move like He moved just a few minutes ago, and some people can't get their seatbelts off. I guarantee if you was in a plane and they told you to take off your seatbelt, what would you do? You'd leave it on, wouldn't you? Well, you ain't fixing to crash. God's fixing to move if you'll take your seatbelts off. If we'll relax and move where God says go, He'll be there when we get there. No, He's already there. We ain't got to wait on Him. But we have a unique, unique uh, it, way to spread, spread the gospel this morning. See, God has provided the means to get His Word to the, to, to the world. But most times, we give up right before the victory. Most of the times, we'll fight until there's nothing left to fight. And just about the time that God says, I'm fixing to take care of it, we don't believe He can. You're looking at me and saying, I thought your wife had sickness. I thought you had, I do. I'm probably going to lose my voice in the middle of this. I lost it Tuesday, and you know what Helen told me? God bless him. You have taken it away. You'll have that same problem one day. You'll have a wife or a husband that'll tell you the truth. When you do, just go ahead and take it and move on. <laughs> but <laughs> if you're facing an, an illness the doctors say is hopeless or may have children who are headed straight to hell. <laughs> I was listening to a pastor the other day, I won't call his name, Charles Stanley, and he said, hell is a H-E-L-L. It's one of those four-letter words. It's real. He said, if you don't believe it's real, let one of your loved ones die that you have a witness to and see what God does to you. God's here to help us today, but He's all here, also here to move us. You may be facing the illness that doctors say is hopeless. You may have children who are headed out straight where we're talking about. And you may be sitting in a comfort zone that you, th that you think can't be touched. You may be going to work every day thinking your job is secure. But what happens when you come to work and your boss gives you 45 minutes to get out of, your, get out of his office? You've been with that company 45 years, never been reprimanded, never been counseled. And two weeks after they run you off, God picks you up. I was at the altar at Callaway Assembly of God by Brother Bill Robinson. If y'all don't, don't remember Brother Bill, he knew how to pray. He also knew what he was reading when he read the Bible. Sometimes I have to look at commentaries. But I was praying, and God said, I'm calling you into the ministry. I said, yeah, right, God. I believe that. Brother Bill said, who you talked to? I said, you didn't hear him? He, he just said, uh, he just called me in a minute. Brother Bill said, yeah, I believe that. How many times does God touch us, push us, pull our hair, if you will, and say, I'm calling you, and we run away from it? Come on, there's some of us here today, and, and more than me and, me and my uh, brother Fred. There's a lot more than me and brother Fred. Let's run from God, literally. Don't bother me, God. I got too many things going on, good things. I got too many friends that's going and doing other things, and I don't want to go to church. i tell you what will happen to you. You'll go to church with your wife, and you'll be standing in the pew on the outside, and she, it, it, one of your best friends is preaching to you. That's what he was there for, to preach to me, even though there's a lot of people in that church that night. I asked God, I said, God, if you make hell, you go, I'll go. Don't do that. Guess what she did? Pushed out right by me and went to y'all. Now I'm thinking God's going to strike me graveyard dead. I'm never going to leave this place. He is going to kill me today, tonight. But anyway, I went to the altar. I've heard people talk about I can't do this and I can't do that. And you can't without him. But he took away smoking. He took away my desire not to want to play basketball. Can you imagine a God that would do that? I loved basketball, and I was pretty good at it. I was on the traveling team. I, I could outcuss anybody on the team the night I went to the altar. The next day, I called the guys, and I said, listen. And we were going to a tournament in Dothan that night. I said, uh, I'm not going to go tonight. They said, what do you mean you're not going to go? I said, I'm not going to go anymore. I'm going to quit. Have you gone crazy? Have you lost your mind? I said, mm-hmm but I'm not going back. He took away smoking. He took away cussing. 
He took away my desire to do the things that I didn't do for Him. And He put me in a place where I could be comforted. He put me in a place where I could listen to a pastor that would preach to me, that would teach me, that would lead me and direct my path. David Warren loved Ben Armstrong. You know why he loved me? Because he knew I didn't love nobody else. When I came back from Vietnam, I didn't love myself. That's another story. But Brother Warren one time, me and a fellow just got saved, used to shoot pool together. You ever shot team pool? That's a good game because he was better than I was. He usually won all of them, and I got credit for it. But anyway, Brother Warren said, we're going to have a visitation tomorrow night. I want you guys to show up. I said, I don't know how to do that. He said, you'll learn. We got there that night, and he gave us the keys to the van, told us where to go down in Dalkeith to the families would go on to visit. I asked Junior in, on the van, I said, what are we going to do when we get there? He said, Brother Warren said, God speak to us. Ain't you got no faith? I said, you got saved when I did. Leave me alone. But anyway, we got on the van and went down and visited the people and come back through town. And there's a little bar there on Over Street Road right there on the corner. It was called Dempsey's. We knew Dempsey. Dempsey liked us. We went in out to Junior said, we're going to stop and witness at the bar. I said, no, we ain't. I said, Brother Warner, come out here and he'll blow us away. I said, we ain't going to do that. He said, yeah, we are. We went in there and he told Dempsey, he said, I want to hand out some tracks and teach, preach a little bit. Brother, they made him cut the jukebox off. We got back in the van and I said, you know what? You're crazy in a hayseed. You're going to get us killed. I said, if Brother Warren saw that van, he's going to think we fell off the wagon already. Got to the church, and guess who saw the van? And guess what he did, Brother Tony? He was in the back door listening to the little, little, little speech. It, it wasn't no preaching. It was a speech. But God sometimes will wake us up, and you won't even know he's there. I want to tell you about some people that, that, that met God the right way. Let's turn with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 5. I may read all this, and I may not, but in verse 21 it says, And when Jesus was past, let me pray before we read today. Father, we thank you today. And God, I know today that this is an opportunity that, that don't come very often. And it's a good thing, Lord, because I get tired real easy. But I know today, Lord, your love in my life. I know today, Lord, your strength in my life. I know today, Lord, that during those times when I don't feel like taking another step, that you take them for me and that you take me with you. And Father, I'm glad today that you will try us once in a while, that you will teach us, that you will show us. God, as I sat on my porch this morning, as cold as it was, with the little heater that was doing no good, I knew, Lord, you were there. I could see you in the trees. I could see you in the sun, and I could definitely feel the cold. But God, I know today that you showed up in this place today to bless our hearts and bless our lives, to touch those anxieties, those fears that we might have, because you're a God that healeth. You're a God that moves. You're a God that changes. You're a God that speaks to those situations that we don't understand. And I thank you today for being Lord of my life, and King of Kings today. Help us as we read your word. And God, you let me be your spokesman. Don't let me be my spokesman. Let me be yours. But in verse 21, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, many people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now keep in mind, Jairus was somebody important in the religious community around there. I said religious, not Christian. In the religious uh, community. But he didn't worry about the dirty clothes he's going to have to get off the ground. He had a reason for falling at Jesus' feet. And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, life at the point of death, and I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, that's one little miracle there that somebody pushed, Jairus, pushed this button, if you will, on Jairus' heart. I know who he was. That's J-E-S-U-S. -S. He pushed a button on Jairus' heart. He talked to Jairus and told Jairus, your daughter's dying, and if you don't get off of your lazy uh, robing 
whatever you do every day, she's going to die. He heard that Jesus was coming. How many have heard that Jesus is coming today? How many knows that if he can heal, like I'm fixing to read in this chapter, that day, why ain't he doing it today? I got a, I got a little uh, summation for you. Some of us don't know how to move back to him anymore. I, I probably won't never get to preach again because the pastor's here today, and I didn't think he's going to be here. <laughs> But I can tell you this much, somebody's got to push our button. Brother Glenn, somebody's got to tell us when we got COVID, it's going to be all right. Now, it's not, it's not wrong to be scared. Somebody tells me I'll have COVID, I'm going to bury my head in the sand and say, when it's over, y'all call me. I got a neighbor that went down state with his, went to Tampa with his wife and to a family reunion. Al said they got back and they got a call and said that, Everybody down there in that family had the COVID, so he had to stay out of work seven days. The day is to go back to work, he fell out his front door and broke his foot. He said, now I'm going to be out longer. I said, you're just trying to get out of work, Al. That's all that is. But anyway, <laughs> and, but, but anyway Jesus went with him, and, and much people followed. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she, when, he, when she had heard of Jesus, she came into press behind and looked and, and touched his garment. For he, he, he said, if I, for she said, if I touch his clothes, I'll be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She left, uh, she fell in her body uh, that she was healed and that, uh, of that plague. And Jesus... Immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out, he turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Ooh, I'm glad I got a God that you ain't even got to touch that'll reach down with his, te- with his coattails and touch you and bless you and heal your body. I'm glad today that we got a God who when you call on that name Jesus, uh, you, you can call on a lot of names in politics today. But I'm finding out one th- finding out. I'm finding out one thing about politics. They won't tell you the truth. They won't do what you thought they would do. They won't go where you thought they'd go, but Jesus. Jesus is there all the time. If he ain't already there when you get there, you did something wrong on your way. But he'll be there. He will stand with you. He'll fight for you. Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, You see the multitude thronging you. What are you at talking about? Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was do- done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, because you didn't believe, you're not going to be healed. Mm-mm. He said, Daughter, Hey, Christian, your faith has made you whole. Don't you want some faith where you can push into the crowd? Even knowing that people are going to make fun of you, laugh at you, carry on with you. You know why them people on that basketball team didn't bother me? I'd have beat every one of them brains out. No, they knew that I could take care of that problem too. But I know this much. When I got saved, I got saved. Some people get saved and they give up. But that's the time that you fight the hardest. That's the time when the enemy's going to tell you you can't. And if you'll stick with him and walk with Jesus Christ, he'll get defeated, he'll get turned away, and he won't bother you no more because he's a liar too. You know what I told Helen the other day? I said, you know, I hate politicians. She said, no, you don't. I said, no, I just dislike them. I ain't supposed to hate nobody. I said, but I hate some of them. But I said, you know who I hate? She said, who? I said, I hate the devil. She said, I said, first of all, he'll lie to us. He told us your knee's going to be all right. He didn't, but the doctor did. When he took that second and third x-ray, he said it was healing. Then we come in here today, and he says there's a bigger gap. I said, somebody's not being honest with us. Maybe we need to fly to Houston or somewhere, take a vacation, and go to the hospital there. She didn't like that idea. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. While he yet spake... There came from the ruler of the synagogue, 
from, from the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Don't trouble him no more. Well, that's pretty good news, I guess, for a father. Your daughter's dead. What did I do wrong, Lord? That's what I'd have been saying. How can I change this, Lord? Jairus wanted that. But listen to what Jesus said. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the rulers of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered the man to follow him. And he only took Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And it cometh to the house of the rulers of the synagogue and sees, seeing the, the tumult, the noise, and them that wept and wailed greatly. You know, here's the thing about the wealth the, the, the we, we, weeping and the crying group in there. You know what they used to do back in that day? This ain't the way it is, but this is what it was. They called down to the union hall and said, send us about 12, 14 rulers. That, that ain't in my Bible. I made that up as I go. Send us some mourners here to cry and carry on. No tears within miles of that place where that little girl was. Nothing about Jesus in that place except wailing and carrying on. Because they had forgot that Jesus had just healed a guy that had the name Legion, threw out the demons out of him. They went in a, a herd of hogs, and the hogs jumped off the mountain to kill themselves. He had just done that in this previously in this chapter. Now, a lot of the times when we look around and we say, well, I don't know if God can do it. He can do it. He's done it today. He'll do it tomorrow. If he did it last week, it's coming next week. If he did it last year, your year might be this year. How many of you have had fun since Hurricane you-know-who? Not many of us have. We've dealt with insurance companies, all the stuff that goes on. But I learned one thing about that little trip, that if you're a veteran and you're getting benefits from the VA, you better keep your mouth shut. I was dealing with insurance company, dealing with lawyers, adjusters, all morning long. I had an appointment with a counselor out on base, uh, she don't counsel me. Me and her talk about our families now. But anyway, I went into her office that day, and I, she said, well, how are you doing? I said, you know why I know why people walk in an office and kill all of them. I did not mean that. I'd been going to her 10 years. I would not do something like that. She was typing. I said, well, what are you doing? She said, I'm putting that in your, no, don't put that in my permanent record. You know me better than that. She said, you'll hear from the, uh, benefits later in the next few weeks. I don't want to hear from her. Take that out of my record. Leave that alone. No, don't do that. But she did. And she said, the first thing I want to tell you is you don't say or do anything dumb like that anymore. I don't do it no more, I promise. Well, I got more benefits than I've ever had from the VA because I said I was going to go to an office and do something stupid. <laughs> but, you know, you learn from your mistakes. I've learned a lot about how to say things, how to do things, where to go, when to come back, and forgetting about the insurance companies and all the people that held you down. Pastor Tony ought to be crazy as a poor slide of bass drum with all he's had to <laughs> Amen, brother. On all the stuff that he's had to put up with, with the church getting rebuilt. But I'm telling you, God is still alive. And he suffered no man to come into. Why do you think he just asked Peter, James, and John? Pastor, you ever wonder about that? Why would he just pick out three of his disciples? Why not some people in the crowd? And why not in that crowd that that woman was in, wasn't there more people healed? If there was healed, why wasn't it recorded somewhere? Because I believe there was. I believe there was people falling out in the street like the old-fashioned prayer, prayer revivals we used to have. But I also believe today that he took Peter, James, and John in that room for one reason and one reason only. Put out the whalers, brought in Mr. and Mrs. Jairus to their 12-year-old daughter, and they began to pray. But why Peter, James, and John? Did you ever hear of prayer warriors? I'm not going to do this but once, but I am going to do this. We have prayer around here on Mondays. Hello? How many knew that? How many didn't know that? Okay, most of us knew that, knows that, right? Pastor Tony pours his heart out every Monday afternoon back there in his office. 
praying for our needs, praying for the things in this church. We have a pretty good prayer meeting inside the church, too, on Monday night. We'd love to see you from 6 to 7 on Monday night. We'd love to have every smiling face here. I'm sorry, Pastor Tony, I had to do that. Peter, James, and John knew how to pray. Peter, James, and John knew how, what their mom and their grandmom and all the other had done. They knew how to pray. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he sees the noise. And when he was come, come in, he said unto them, Why make you this noise? And weep. The damsel's not dead. She's asleep. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and then were, that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted damsel. I say, get up and rise. <laughs> Here's the part that, that Jesus put up with in his walk a lot of the times. What do you mean she's alive? She's dead. We saw the, the people from the funeral home. We saw the, the people that came in that usually prayed. We know what happened. Why are they taking her out? And you're claiming she's healed. Don't doubt. Just have faith. Don't doubt. Just believe. Don't step outside of here until you're sure that it's time to step out of here. <coughs> Don't move when it's not time. <coughs> but anybody laughed him to scorn, but when he put them all out, he took, took, the down, took the little girl by the hand and prayed for her. And he took her by the hand and said unto her, just what I just read, straightway the little girl arose and walked, for she was a she was at the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. He charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something be given her to eat. Now, when I first started studying this, I got to thinking about some things. Uh, my little girl just died, and she's been raised from the dead, and now I'm going to bring her a hot dog. Why in the world... Would you, after a little girl had died, try to give her something to eat? Because these people believed there was ghosts or whatever they want to call them that, that were in the, that lived. But they also knew if that little, Jesus knew if that little girl could eat, that there wasn't nothing going on that was not honest. Jesus has got a way of insulting us, leading us, guiding us and directing us that we won't even see if we don't go in faith. If we don't go in faith believing that God can do it, it's not going to happen for us. If you don't go in faith believing that God can do it, it's never going to happen. Somebody said to me a while back, and he wasn't a friend of mine. He's just somebody that thinks that Christianity is funny, and uh, I hope that he gets saved before he makes it out of here. But he said to me, he said, you don't believe all that Christian stuff, do you? I said, no, nah, I just do it. He said, I know you do. I said, have you got a minute? And he said, yeah. I said, tell your wife to get out here with you. He said, what for? I said, because when I lay my hands on you, I want you to see you slain in the spirit out here in the blacktop in this parking lot. You know what he said? You had not changed a bit. I said, oh, I've changed a little bit. I'm not where you are, and I ain't going back where you are. But I can tell you, you can come where I am. There's no reason why we can't tell the world that, that come on with me and I'll show you something you've never seen before. There's no reason why we can't tell a world that's lost and dying that there's some sunshine, S-O-N, that's looking down on us. There's someone trying to change us, and we're not listening. We're going the way of those that will lead us, and we're not turning back. And I want this tonight to get not only in your head, but in, or tonight, today, to get in your heart. I want you to get this in your spirit. I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know what you're facing, but I do know that it's not over until God says it's over. See, the world sometimes will give up. World leaders will say nothing else can be done. Doctors will say nothing else can be done. And sometimes, sometimes religious leaders will say it's over. 
I said religious leaders. We have a lot of religious past preachers on TV. Oh, man, it got quiet. You aren't mad at me, are you? We have a lot of religious leaders on TV and radio. But we've got a ton of Christian leaders on the radio and TV that we won't listen to because it kind of hurts. If it hurts, what do I do? I put salve in it, right? Salve don't take care of it. I go to the doctor, right? Dr. Jesus is waiting on us today. Dr. Jesus is waiting on you today. Dr. Jesus wants you to know that He's still on the throne, that He still cares of See, God's not influenced by what the so-called leaders of this world say. I believe with all my heart that the church is going to, in my life, see more miracles, more saved, more prayers answered than ever before. I want to get back to the time in the altar. And I'm going to see it in my lifetime again. And I hope I'm the one standing in the pulpit when it starts happening so I can step off of this thing. But I want to see again people slain in the Spirit. We're scared of that, aren't we? Ooh, that's spooky. Yeah, you get slain in the Spirit, you ain't going to know a lot for minutes, for sometimes hours. First time I got slain in the Spirit, they had to haul me out of the church, and I was about 267 pounds in. I was a pretty good load. It took five of them to get me out of the church that night. And I was still telling them, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I don't, I don't stay. And I wish they could. I wish they could have stayed right there with God. And I would, have got, I would have got raptured that night if I'd have stayed in the altar. But no, they had to close the doors and take me on. I told them later on, God's going to get you all for that. But you know, sometimes the world will give world leaders something to say that don't matter. It's kind of like my dad used to say, and I don't know where he got this from. It doesn't make more sense than a hill of beans. Why would anybody stack up beans in a hill? I'm just asking, you know. I've never seen anybody do that. I used to hear Daddy say that all the time. I also never understood him. Uh, he, he, said, he said when I used to drink, and I've never seen my dad drink. I've never seen him drunk. But he said, I was coming home one night. This, this, this is not my dad. This is somebody else. He said, I was coming home one night. About 2 in the morning, he said, and I was doing about 70 in a 55. He said, and the cop stopped me. And he walked up to the window, and he said, hey, where are you going? What's the hurry? He said, I'm going to a counseling session. He said, at 2 o'clock in the dead gum morning? He said, yeah. He said, who's going to give you that? He said, my wife's waiting on me right now. <laughs> the world sometimes gives up. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he's always going to be there. See, we're at a place where the revivals of decades ago won't do what God is going to do. I'm tickled, excited, and enthused at what God did in Brownsville. That was Brownsville. It was years ago. I'm tickled at what God's doing in India, France, you name it, Yugoslavia, all over the world with our missionaries. That blesses my heart. But you know what? Some of us come to church and we say we're Christians. You never notified your face of that, some of us. You're still carrying around that old druggy look. You're still carrying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that. But it's time I believe that God is saying to us, get excited at what's being preached in our local church. Get excited at what T Pastor Tony's preaching. Get excited about what we need to listen to and what we don't listen to. It's 12 o'clock, if anybody needs to know that, if your food's getting cold. It'd be all right. The rest of you is going to be here at least another 15 minutes. Will that be all right? Yeah. Pastor Tony, did you hear that? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, you, now I'm throwing him a bone, and he's taking it too. But anyway, I wish it was like it used to be. Can I tell you, if God's not real to you anymore, what happened? Well, I don't feel God like I used to. Well, I don't get to go to things like I used to. What happened? Did God leave you or did you exit? When you start thinking about that thing, you'll quit wondering about why God ain't moving. I have a good time on the front row sometimes. I invite you up here anytime. We've always got two or three seats. You'll get a little holy slobber on you once in a while, but it's a good place to be. 
Now, I know some of you come in the front door, Sister Deborah, and, and you, you'd argue with me that that's the front door and you're on the front pew. I know that. But anyway, we have got... <laughs> <laughs> she's a pre, she's a PK. She can take it. Uh, those kids are those kids were tough. But I, what's happening? My Bible tells me that lo, I'm with you always, and that don't mean you can't fly. You can if you're on a jet. But anyway, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Who left? It wasn't God. See, we're in a society that looks for a quick fix. Can I tell you, it's not pastor's fault if we're not where we are, where we're supposed to be. It's not the board's fault if you're not as strong as you used to be. It's not your Sunday school teacher's fault. Brother Glenn does a good job. Brother Fred filled in, did a good job. I'm sure Brother Jim's doing a good job. All of you are doing a good job. It's not y'all's fault that people are not doing what they ought to do or going where they ought to go. It's me, Lord, needing prayer. It's me, Lord, that needs you more today than I did yesterday. See, when we pray through, we can say it's not my bro- that's not my brother or sister who needs prayer. It's me. It's me who needs to realize it's not over until God says it's over. It's me that's tearing down what I love. It's me separating myself from the body. And it's me tearing down what I want to help build. I've seen people in churches that spent years in churches were there when that church was probably first built get mad at the pastor and leave that church and do everything they can to tear down a fellowship. Why do we do that? We've left God. God hasn't left us. We've left Him. One thing I know about being Armstrong right now, and I'm putting this out there, when I get ready to leave, I'll give Pastor Tony a notice. I won't just walk out one Sunday and and upset everybody. We don't do that anymore. When we start doing that, we're worried about ourselves more than we are anything else. I'd be worried about who I hurt. I'd be worried about who hurt me. I'd be worried about what I was going to do and how I was going to repair the... Listen, you can go as, as, as far as you want to go doing the things you want to do, and God's always going to bring you back. I was in Walmart one day, and I do that once every month when Helen hands me the list and says, go buy groceries, because I do it. Like I, I just do it because I'm, I'm a house husband. I do the, best, <laughs> do the best I can. But I was in Walmart, and a guy that I've always not liked, I never liked Jimmy Cox. I'm sorry, Jimmy's gone to heaven. In fact, he had that disease when he stopped me in Walmart that day. He said, would you do me a favor, Ben? I said, what? He said, would you put me on your prayer list? I said, no, I won't do that. He said, well, I just want you to pray for me. I said, well, come here. I got out the oil out of my back pocket, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm fixing to pray for you. Didn't you ask me to pray? He said, in here? I said, well, if you were sick... And passed out in here, and you knew prayer would bring you back. What would you want? I'd want you to pray. I said, that's what I'm fixing to do. See, we can write down a prayer request. It's okay. But don't write it down and throw it in the trash. I'm just saying, I don't know if anybody does that. But if you do, don't do that. The best way to tell somebody you're going to pray for them is to get them by the hand and pray for them. I've had people... Tell me, you know, you don't, you, you just don't do that. Oh, yes, I do. I hadn't seen the management in Walmart or anywhere ever tell me not to do that. I'm sure they've got rules against that, but I'm going to do it as long as I can. And I will tell you this. You want to get Facebook blackballed? Say something on there about the Lord. You'll be off at two weeks. You don't even know why. And you know what I said? Joe Biden needs to get saved. This has been, for a few people that are listening, I'm sorry, but we need to realize it's not over until God says it's over. See, separating myself from the body uh, is tearing it down. T.D. Jakes was preaching one time. I don't know what you think about T.D. Jakes. I used to love to hear him preach. Lately, that's different. But anyway, he was preaching one time, and he stopped right in the middle of his message, and he said, Oh, God, 
Come in this house, bully the devil, come on in here and throw your weight around. How many of you want God to throw his weight around? Mm -hmm. How many of you want him to pick you up and throw you on the ground? He'll do it. You'll fall through an altar and people say, are you hurt? No, ma'am, I ain't hurt. No, sir. You fall through that or onto that altar and hurt your back, you wasn't in the spirit with him. Just saying. I don't know if anybody needs to hear that or not. And I'm trying to close. I'm just going a little slow. I got 17 pages here. (laughs) 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 Carry on. (laughs) <laughs> see when when people start hearing that Jesus is passing by like they did that day most of the time when we walk in the doors of our church I've heard pastors say we bring the imps of hell right in the good doors with us and they take up residence where we're sitting I'm not going to pay my tithes to that church no more. Okay, go ahead and steal from God. Then count your blessings as they fly out the door. I'm serious. God will not bless you if you don't bless somebody else. Hmm. When people call you and say, check your mailbox, there's something in there for you. You go out and there's something definitely in there for you. You don't know why they did that. People knock on your door and say, hey, I got a chocolate cake. She knows who she is. I just wondered if y'all might want some. Helen didn't get a lot of that chocolate cake. (laughs) She's sick, you know. Somebody walks up and says, I got some gumbo. Would you like like some? Give me the whole pot. Don't leave just some of it. I just grilled some pork would you like some pork chops yeah or another brother walk up to you and say do you do you eat fish they don't even have to be clean just bring them to me and i'll eat them (laughs) i'm not telling you got to do it (laughs) i'm not begging today somewhere between jerry's house and jesus jerry's encountered a crowd that the bible says there was a press a great crowd but jerry's pressed in And Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. See, we've gotten comfortable today in our Christian walk. We make fun of those who are different in their worship. We've gotten a holier-than-thou attitude that's a stench in the very nostrils of God. We could come to a Pentecostal church and not even raise our hands or our voices to God. I know that that uh, Maori and Alex probably will be embarrassed when I say this, but they bless me just a little bit. They may not bless anybody else in this church. And maybe y'all need to move up front. The glory might fall out here more than it does other places. But I'm telling you, the glory falls. All three songs they sang this morning related to what I'm preaching. How did you do that? Tell me he don't know how to be a praise leader. I think he does. You know why I think he does? Mallory tells him what to do. <laughs> but they'll be married. They'll be married a long time. In fact, if y'all if y'all would come up, I'm fixing to start closing today. Our praise team would come. I ain't got but nine more pages. See, our Christian walk has got to be different. We've got to be different in our worship. We've got to get rid of that holier than thou attitude. And we've got to start acting Pentecostal. Somebody said, I fell out in the Spirit and I hurt my back. I said, no, you didn't. No, I didn't watch. You didn't fall out in the Spirit. Be careful when you step out toward God and you want His blessings. When I fall, I fall a bunch. Footage falls when I fall. Because God pushed over a big man. Uh, But anyway... God wants no part of, if it's not God's fault if you're not being ministered to, like I've, like I've said before. It's not God's fault our Sunday school's not growing. 
It's our faults because we Pentecostals have stopped looking. And God has, somewhere along the line, we stopped letting God program us, and we've started being our own program. This church ain't here just to tickle our ears. If it was, I'd be laughing all the time, big as mine is. Instead of pricking our hearts, it's our fault for God not moving. And until we forget about us and start putting Him first, then we're not going to see the Spirit move like it used to. I talk to Pastor Tony a lot. And anything I'm saying, I've probably told him. And sometimes when he talks to me, I don't really listen. You didn't know that, did you, brother? But I go home and I write it down or I'd forget it. How many of us have had God to rattle our bones in a situation? And I'm talking about really just grab you and shake you and say it's going to be all right. And I ain't strong enough at times to claim that. Because when you're going through those storms in your life, Tony said, are you going through the storm or are you listening to God? What do you lay down to hear God? It's hard. Sometimes I don't lay it down soon enough. It's kind of like a sore I mean, you've been small and mama told you don't pick that sore. What she mean is don't make it bleed. When we start picking at those things that the devil brings in our lives, he's been beating me pretty good the last few years too. But I look at Sister Shirley back there. I look at Brother Carl and some of these that have lost loved ones. And I thank God I'm not there. Some of us have loved ones that, like mine is, I love her very much. I, I wouldn't trade her for 10 more, just like her. It'd be hard, but I wouldn't do that. My basketball nose is starting to dribble. But it'd be hard to not know, any, to know anybody else like I know her. She knows what I'm thinking. She reads my mind. And she's not God. But I know this much. God is going to move in this church. You call, it, you call it dreams, you call it visions, whatever you want to call it. I have seen cars in front of this church going by and turn around and coming back to just see what's going on. That's how bad I want something to move in this church. We saw a move of that today. But it's not over until God says it's over. And it's our fault if it don't get over. It's not His. It's move, he's moving in this place today. And I don't know where you are today, but all the songs that we sang today were for me. You know that doctor? With the lady with the issue of blood? And that doctor with the Jairus' daughter? I'm sure that they had spoke to all the specialists if there were any specialists in that day they had done all the things they knew to do to get their loved one healed but you know the other thing that just stuck in this little pea brain of mine what's 12 years of an issue of blood and 12 years in a little girl's life got to do with the same chapter Sometimes God gives us chapters in the Bible that we read and we read, but we don't really study. That 12 years of that woman of the issue of blood and that 12-year-old child simply says, I don't care about your age. I don't care about how young you are. I don't care where you're going, but I know where you're headed. Give me a chance to stand in the gap for you. Give me a chance to move for you. Folks, if you haven't done any backyard studying, try that. Don't try it on a day like today. Try that backyard studying. 
You know what I got for Christmas for my son? Two rocking chairs. He said, if I come over here and find them in the house, I'm going to throw them outside. I said, you come in my house and do that, and I'll kill you, and they'll know you're dead. But anyway, he gave me two rocking chairs. And I used them things out on the back porch. You know what you can see on your back porch? The sun. God's glory everywhere you look. You can even get interested in watching a squirrel and reading your bird seed. Of course, I don't eat bird seeds, so I don't worry about it. But you'll begin to watch squirrels eat bird seed. You saw them do that all your life. It's never bothered you. You'll see birds come by that you don't even recognize. You'll also see something else. You'll see your dogs that you let out every day get out and you'll have to go find them. But you'll meet somebody that just needed a special prayer the day that you had found him and they called you and told you to come and get him. I got him in the truck. I said, I was praying I'd find him. And the guy said, are you a Christian? I said, yeah, for just about half my life. He said, well, we got a problem. Could you pray with us? Right out on the front lawn. I got back in the truck and I was crying so bad I hope I didn't see no traffic. But I got back to the house and I opened the garage door and I told Zeus, I said, you may think you're a little God. You do this stunt one more time. I'm going to pray salvation all over your little body. Do you understand me, dog? You know, sometimes God puts us in situations we'll never understand, like I've said before. But he's never put me in a situation where I haven't saw his goodness when I look for it. I don't believe his salvation is closed to anybody. And if you're here today and you don't know this Jesus that walked into Jairus' daughter's bedroom and said the little girl's asleep, she's not dead, with all scoffers that he looked and said, sure, she's just sleeping. There's scoffers in your life today. There are those today that will say to you, I don't believe anything you're telling me. Just tell them this. One of these days, I'm going to see you, and you're not going to be going where I'm going unless things change. God knows where we are today. If you need prayer, if you don't know Jesus Christ today, I want to invite you to this altar. Undo your seatbelt and get ready. The flight, we have landed this plane as Pastor Tony says. But I can tell you what, the landing is smooth. Once we get out on the on the uh, walkway or whatever, God's going to be there. And He'll be waiting for us with open arms. Anybody today that's not saved, anybody today needs special prayer, we want to pray with you. If not, then I'm going to close This will be your last chance till the next time. God's looking for you. God's waiting for you today. Everybody at peace? Did I keep you too long? I apologize. I don't apologize. God bless you. Father, we thank you today. And Lord, I pray that your word has gone out, that your word has accomplished, God, what you gave me to accomplish. Father, I'm thankful today that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we can always call on that name and it'll shine down on us and you'll bless us, you'll keep us, you'll help us and we'll know the direction we need to go. Those that are here today that are uncertain about tomorrow, that are uncertain about this afternoon, God, you minister to them. We pray for the Barstow family today, Lord. God, that you would strengthen them, that you would minister to them and lift them up. You would help them in the loss of granny in their life. But as I was talking to them last night, they were telling me, she's looking down and saying, I wish I could be there, but I wouldn't come back for nothing. Today, Lord, your presence is in this place. You're a real God. You're a real helper. You're a real leader. You're the one, Lord, that will speak to us in the middle of our hurts. 
And Father, we thank you today for your healing virtue that flowed in this place today. And God, I thank you. I glorify you today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Y'all have a good day and God bless.